Hey everyone, welcome back to another Anime Kingdom review. You see by title below, yes, this is on episode 9 and episode 10 of Edo Manga Sensei. And yes, you probably have many questions. First being, where the hell has my videos been? You know, two weeks ago, you were probably wondering that. And then, of course, some videos came out and then obviously they stopped again. And you're probably wondering, like, what the hell is going on? Well, if you haven't been up to date with my Facebook or Twitter or seen my last vlog, the reason for two weeks ago, me not having any videos that week is because I ended up going on a little family vacation. And that is why I ended up not being able to make any videos for that week. Now, last week, I ended up starting to do what I did when I went on a trip in the winter time, which was start making double episode reviews. That's why this is on episode 9 and 10, and not just 10. Um, why am I doing that? That's pr it's pretty much because like I still want to give you guys my opinions and thoughts of how I felt about that certain episode, even though we have passed that point. And that even stays more true considering the fact that this was actually supposed to come out last week, but then my graphics card ended up dying. I've been trying to, you know, hold out to see how long it can last because I didn't want to spend a lot of money yet, at least, until finally it did die. So I decided to go ahead and buy a new graphics card, which is why finally the videos are up and, you know, all good now. So pretty much that is the reason why last, last week, pretty much no videos. Why last week it started off with double episode reviews and then just stopped for some reason. That is the reasons behind all of that going on um also want to pretty much clarify how this format works is when i did in winter i would just watch both episodes and then i would go ahead and just make one huge cut of video talking about both episodes this time i want to do something different so instead for example for this one i'm going to watch episode 9 make a review watch episode 10 make a review and then put them together why am i doing that that's pretty much because obviously you know, if I already knew what happened in episode 10, it may completely change my opinion and how I feel about something that happened in episode 9. I don't want that to happen. I want to give you guys my true thoughts and opinions on how I felt when I first watched the episode, which is why I'm doing it this way. And yeah, just to, just wanted to clarify that to you, all you guys as well. Um, if you, you know, I, I, I understand there's some people that may be like, you know, I don't, I don't want to, that was two weeks ago. I don't really care to hear what you think about that episode. So if you didn't, if you don't really, it's fine. Don't worry about it. If you do, then just stay along and just, you know, you don't have to skip to anything. But if you want to, in the description below, there's actually a time link where it goes straight to my episode 10 portion of the review. And yeah, you just click that and you can go straight to there. And yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say, guys. Um, time to get to the video finally. <laughs> I know it's quite a while. That was like three minutes practically, but I just wanted to at least clarify and explain everything if you've been wondering what's been going on and how this video format is, you know? So yeah, let's get on to the review. How did I feel about episode nine of Edo Manga Sensei? Because honestly, I gotta say, you know, I've been saying for quite a while, I'm kind of on the edge. I'm not too sure who is my favorite girl in this show. Sometimes I really like Sagiri. Sometimes I like, you know, Muramasa many times I like elf and honestly this episode it kind of just stayed true to me like it sucks because you are you see him like several times like him saying that you know he already loves someone and stuff like that and you know it's Sagiri which honestly like I like Sagiri but I really really do like elf it's pretty crazy considering my first impressions of her I didn't like her character and then slowly grew more on me and to the point where this episode literally I was just like oh my gosh this is she is the best girl in the show, just hands down, period, at least in my opinion. You may feel differently. You know, I do like Muramasa. She had a lot of cute moments in here as well. She looked really good in her bikini as well. Um, and yeah, like I do, I can see the, you know, why you would like her over the other girls. I can see why you would like Sagiri over the other girls as well. But overall, for me at least, like I've really been enjoying Elf. And it's like every single episode, I'm kind of just like, man, it sucks because it kind of seems like she's, you know, taking a back foot, she can see that he doesn't have the same feelings that she does for him. But in this episode, I really enjoyed her taking initiative, taking kind of trying to get him to, you know, obviously be hers and everything with the whole little, you know, kind of story at the very end, which was really nice. Her hearing about her parents and everything, and you know, how, how they got, you know, married and everything. And of course, there was the funny scene in the the, the hot springs of course um where the brother pretty much was like please marry my sister i thought it was gonna be one of those like full-blown like 
no one's ever gonna marry her. Can you please do this? Like, you, you seem like the perfect person, pretty much, because, well, no one else would, kind of thing. It seemed like that's how it was gonna be. Um, but luckily, it also wasn't fully like that, and they had a bunch of things. You know, it was really cute to hear, you know, Masamune, he does have feelings for her if, you know, he didn't already love someone, who we pretty much can assume is Sagi. Um, he would have probably already fallen in love with her. So that, that just goes to show that it is possible that he can end up with her. It's not a for sure thing that he ends up with Sagi. It's just more of a, you can already see that it's kind of more stacked into that root kind of it just seems like it um but overall i really enjoyed this episode because of how much you know elf was in it we got to see her in a bikini we got to see her on the beat you know it's always awesome to see a beach in hot springs episode there's always gonna be that kind of episode in an anime and just i love seeing how her and elf you know him and elf just literally connected and how there was points where like he was gonna you know put on the suntan lotion on her and the brother's just like over there like what are you doing like he's gonna kill him or something like he's i'm watching you kind of thing and then later on it goes to when they're in the hot springs and he's like please marry or like marriage and the other guy i forget what his name is but of course he just came along just because he's also part of their writing group but i mean he he's literally just there just for i guess the him thinking that you know he's actually gay so when, when what's it called he when they were gonna be roommates him and masamune and he, he was like oh no 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 I, i'm straight i don't want to do that and then that didn't help either when he thought that you know El, you know elf's brother pretty much proposed to him which of course obviously that wasn't what it really was but it, it's pretty funny it was pretty funny honestly to see that interaction honestly but overall it was just a really nice episode. Got a, like I said, a bunch of scenes with her, um, Elf in a bikini and at the beach. You get to see tons of moments between her and, of course, um, Masamune. We got to see that whole scene with them by the that little that you know the Elven Force as she calls it. That's where her story is written and where her parents proposed. Um, her father proposed to her mother. Beautiful place. Lots of fireflies all over the place, and it was really nice to see that she was like she told him like you know. You're a candidate, pretty much, in her own tsundere kind of way, obviously. She wasn't going to go straight up like, yeah, marry me right now. But she was pretty much, like, literally said that, you know, he he already said that he is in love with someone already. But she was like, you know, I'm going to make you fall in love with me. And I was like, yeah, that, that is something Elf would say. And I, I love that confidence that she does have, honestly. She has that shy, cute side, but she also has that confidence. And honestly, my favorite girl, period, like, I... That's all I can say, honestly, for this episode was it was just awesome because of how focused it was on her. And literally, after hearing her speech at the very end, I, I can't help but just say I really do hope that the end of this, he ends up picking Elf. Is that a high possibility? Mm, not at the moment. It's definitely a possibility. But like I said before, it's more stacked toward going towards how... It would probably be with Sagiri, which honestly, in my opinion, like I like Sagiri, but as we go more and more in and we learn about these other characters and probably the next episode will be about like Muramasa or something, it's probably going to make us, like at least me, feel like I like these other characters more. Sure, I like Sagiri, I like the relationship that they have, but I kind of think that it would be just nice just to have them as brother and sister, to be honest. That's... That's my opinion. Don't need to go all of a sudden commenting in my, you know, putting in the comments below like, who the, you don't know shit. You don't know anything. What the heck? Suggity is life kind of thing. You know, like, I'm not gonna lie. She is super adorable, honestly. But I really love Elf's character and I think that he being with her would honestly be awesome and the next episode may change my mind. Not change my mind at least. Like, I'm for sure gonna be on Elf, but it may make me have a different view on if he ends up choosing, you know, Muramasa instead. That's probably how it's gonna be in episode 9 is Elf, episode 10 is Muramasa, and then episode 11 maybe Sagiri, and episode 12 I'm not really too sure how that will be. And of course, it's still up in the open where if we're gonna have a second season or not either. So, definitely excited to see how the next episode will be. Um, overall, for me at least, definitely my favorite episode. I always love the beach. Come on, you always gotta love the beach and Hot Springs episodes. There's always tons of fan service, and it just. It doubled in being my favorite episode just for the fact that obviously it was focused on Elf and she, in my opinion at least, best girl. So yeah, that's all I pretty much got to say about this portion of the review. Um, we'll get I'll have a little cut here and it'll go straight to the episode 10 portion. So yeah, in 3, 2, 1...
and here we are at the episode 10 portion of the review and just like I expected honestly this episode ended up be, being focused on Muramasa and kind of just like how in the last episode with Elf you know confessing her feelings to Masamune at the very end we had the same thing with Muramasa at the end of this episode and I may be a little biased but I still feel that the last episode was better I mean I'm kind of biased because you know I like Elf a lot more but overall, there were still some funny moments, you know, the Kings game was completely hilarious when they were playing. And, like, so many, the moments, the reason why I like Muramasa is because of her reactions, you know. Her embarrassed reactions that you, you pretty much see throughout this episode from the very beginning. When she noticed that he was, you know, st sitting right across of her and she didn't notice when she was reading. To the points where we find out she doesn't wear any pantsu underneath them. Um, thank you for thank you Sagiri for asking that question. And instantly when she was like didn't want to say anything at first, I was like maybe she's just shy. She doesn't want to tell that since obviously Masamune's there. But right when you know you see Elf like oh ho ho, maybe are you? Is it actually that you're? And she covers her mouth. And of course you can't cover Sagiri's mouth. And yeah, turns out she's not wearing any pantsu. So. That's nice to know, Mermasa. Thanks for that image in my head. <laughs> but um, overall, like, it was just, it's always funny to see her reactions. Every moment when he does, when Masamune does something or Elf teasing, you know, her normal teasing on her. And she'll be, like, super embarrassed, super blushing. And it's, it's always cute, honestly, to see those reactions. And then you even see, like, that one moment when she's like, I guess the cat's out of the bag and, like, confesses her, you know to everyone like since it's a cat's out of the bag yes i love masamune and she's like full of confidence and then she goes back to her normal kind of shy side and like uh oh and but you know the only the you know besides the reason of her going on the trip to you know pretty much for his shelf stories it was actually so he can you know she can spend time with him and maybe have some alone time with him pretty much so it, it's funny and cute with those moments and it's pretty funny to see like masamune's like oh so cool but please stop it's embarrassing and then you find out like like so many things obviously like i said before the whole thing with her not wearing any pantsuit the whole thing with her pretty much talking to like an imaginary talking to herself and acting like masamuni's there and with those moments she's just like after like she's just down for the count like Ooh. <laughs> it's just it's honestly pretty damn funny but um Overall, it was just like, it was a nice way to see kind of like since we saw how it went with Elf, um, we saw this time with Muramasa and how pretty much the gist of it, you know, most of it was them, them just kind of like playing King's Game and stuff for a lot of the episode, unlike the last episode where it was pretty much Elf on the offense most of the episode honestly so that's why i kind of feel like i like that one more but it makes sense considering elf's personality and how she is compared to you know muramasa's and how she is the only reason why she ends up confessing at the end is of course because masamune comes up to her because she pretty much tells everyone that she's quitting writing because you know the whole reason why she began writing was obviously so she could find an interesting story and of course she gets that as long as you know masamune continues to you know make stories that's all she needs in life and that was her her one big dream and then of course you know later on he goes and talks to her shows her this he you know at first i'm thinking she thought it was a love letter no that is not it i mean you should know that's your that's your fan letter i'm pretty sure you would know that envelope right but um pretty much he's he you know he talks about how she pretty much like what is like we've already known this before that she, her letters and everything her always saying that his stories are amazing that's what kept him going through like those harsh times that he did when he didn't think he could continue writing you know so that's why it's you know you definitely see why Muramasa is such a huge impact in his life and everything as well and why he wants to help her you know as well and that's why he was able to complete one of his dreams since she was like wait wasn't your dream to you know make an have a story become an anime and watch it with your sister um yeah but you can have more than one dream i guess she didn't really realize that and he of course he says that because his other dream that he finally was able to get come true was of course to finally thank the person that fan who pretty much you know always got him up when he was down and always makes him happy that he whenever he you know reads it and that of course is muramasa so he got that dream to come true and then, of course, she says that her other dream that she's going to make come true, she can't do it alone, but she's going to, of course, make him fall in love with her. So that was pretty much the end of the episode. 
overall, like I said, it like to me at least, I love the episode for um for um Elf considering the whole thing with her. You know, she was more on the offensive, and I just love that part of her personality. Uh, we even got some of cute moments with Elf in this episode, considering you know <laughs> that one part at the beginning where he she's turning around and he's like Emily, and she just huh yes, and I was just like oh. Gosh, that is so adorable. Elf, Emily, perfect girl. Best girl in my opinion. I'm sorry. Even after watching this episode, and I do like Muramasa a lot. I do love her reactions. I do love her character as well. And, you know, I it would like if they ended up together, I wouldn't be mad. But I still think Elf is the best girl, at least in my opinion. But, yeah, overall, like... Just even just the comparison to between the episodes, even if I wasn't biased towards one side, I just feel I like the way it seemed like there was more interactions between Elf and Masamune leading up to that confession, while for Muramasa and Masamune, it was kind of most of the episode, there were some moments in the beginning, and then a lot of it was just them playing King's Game, which was completely hilarious, especially that moment where um, the first thing was Elf saying, um, number one, kiss number two, to which, of course, I knew for a fact something like that was going to happen, and I keep forgetting that guy's name, but he ends up running out like, no! <laughs> oh, man, that guy's got the hugest misunderstanding in the world, literally, honestly. And it was also pretty cute to see that, you know, Muramasa didn't even realize that everyone knew about her, you know, loves her pretty much love letter, which was her story that she put out. Yeah, that includes all of your readers. They all know that. Does she not go on the internet? And I guess, yeah, she doesn't really care about what other people really think, honestly. But it was so cute to, you know, see her figure that out. I'm like, oh my gosh, then all my readers know too? And <laughs> Elf, of course, normal self, teasing all the time, teasing her. And honestly, like, those reactions like that made the episode, for me at least. And the very ending was really nice as well. It definitely gets me excited to see how the next episode will be considering now that this trip is over, now that all of that is over, the confessions are out, it's probably going to be Sagiti's turn next, and then episode 12, I'm thinking, will probably be like some huge cliffhanger. He's probably not going to end up picking a girl. If he does, I'm not too sure who it is. More leaning towards it being Sagiti just because that's kind of how everything points to it at the moment, but like I said, for me at least, best girl is Elf. That's how I feel. But yeah, that's all I gotta say, guys. Hope you enjoyed this Anime Kingdom double episode review. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. If it's anything else, and you want to talk about, comment below as well. And that's for that. That includes for both episodes, guys. So if you want to comment something, you know, a question for a certain episode, just feel free to comment below there and say, hey, in episode nine, blah 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 blah, or episode ten, blah 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 blah. Whatever you want to ask, feel free to comment below and. Yeah, if you did enjoy, don't forget to like. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe for more content. And as always, guys, I want to hear your guys' thoughts. How did you feel about the, these two episodes so far, Anime Watchers Only and Source Material Readers? How did you feel about this episode? And I want to know, after watching these two episodes, who do you think is the best girl? Do you like Elf like me? Do you like Muramasa more? Or are you leaning more towards Sar Sagiri and you're more excited to see how the next episode will be? I want to hear your guys' thoughts, see who you guys think is the best girl, and after these three episodes, after episode 11 happens, we can see what happens on episode 12. Will we get a huge cliffhanger with him not picking any of the girls and a potential second season, or will he, you know, actually decide on a girl for this, the anime only, maybe? Because I think the source material is still going, so I'm not too sure. You never know what could happen, honestly. Sometimes they decide to have the anime end in a certain different way, an anime original way, just so it makes you go kind of like more promotion to go and read the source material and everything. So you never know, honestly, he may end up picking a girl just in the anime only, even though he didn't pick it yet in the source material. But yeah, that's all I got to say, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. And until next time, see ya.